please. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the JavaScript all uh, the JavaScript the JavaScript IPFS IPLD all hands developers call on March the fifth. Um, welcome everyone. I'm today leading the meeting because David doesn't have time. Um, and the crypt pad is also already there. If you haven't added your um, what you've done or and what you will do next week into the crypt pad, please go ahead and add yourself. I will also paste the link to the crypt pad into the chat room. Um, all right. Okay. All right. Um, then we start with the first. Uh, oh, the first item obviously is the note taker, who is willing to take notes. Any volunteers? Anyone? Please. Okay. Thanks, Timothy. You will take the notes. It's actually not too bad because well, everyone's adding his his or her items anyway. Um. All right. Um. Is this the, yeah. All right. So does anyone have anything else for the agenda? Please raise your hand. Yeah, Dimitri. Is this the correct um, crypt pad? Um, well, have I pasted the wrong one because I was in a meeting before, let's see. Uh, um, so the, I see 2018 or 305. Yeah, that's the correct okay, one. So you should on. have, so if it contains things, then. Yep. Yeah, okay. We're good. All right. Uh, any other agenda items? No. All right. So, um, all right. Then let's go through the round table. Oh, I see someone new I haven't seen before. I mean, I haven't been to so many uh, calls so far. So, Zane, are you new to the group? Uh, yeah. So, do you, um, do you quickly introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Zane. I uh, was really sort of like into like uh, the fringes of sort of like distributed data doing um, CRDTs and um, some content addressable storage. Uh, stumbled across libp2p and um, RPFS was really interested in joining. So last week was my first meeting. Um, and so I started to make some very simple PRs uh, to sort of uh, get up to speed on what's happening. I'd like to eventually work on um, DHT awesomeness. So. <laughs> and right. bring IPNS to JS. There you go. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot that. Of course, I missed uh, last week's call myself. So um, sorry for that. Um, okay. So um, now to the now to the roundtable. Um, what everyone has been working on. Um, so I will just start in the order that we have the people in there. So Dimitri, can you please tell us what you've worked on? Uh, sure. So this last week, I was uh, finally able to simplify the input as for circuit. It's where they created the plan. I think they're bit better now and it can be improved still there's uh, but I think we have something that we can actually uh, merge and and go with for for the time being um, that fixed a lot of the CI issues as well um, so overall I think it's it's uh, we, we got everything we needed from from the interrupt tests um, but I got one blocker regarding that, which is that uh, some of the Mac OS builds are failing because of uh, quota exceeded errors uh, in Jenkins. I know that uh, Victor is aware of that and um, looking into it, then we'll probably have something um, that addresses it soon. Uh, it's occasional, so it's, it's, it's quite random. It, you don't hit it every time, so it, it's not a huge deal either. Um, 
Then I also worked on the circuit relay tutorial. Um, and I got a draft for that. I think at some point we, um, David suggested that I um, request a review from, uh, from John and, and um, uh, I believe Rob, um, which I did. I'm not sure if you guys had a chance, and I don't see Rob here, a uh, chance to take a look at it yet. Uh, but it's a small draft I can, if anyone is interested in, in, in reviewing it, I'll leave a link in there. And if you guys are uh, willing to run through it and, and kind of test it out and see if you are able to um, enable circuit and use it and um, have everything working, that would be super, super awesome. Um, and there was an issue that, uh, uh, I th I'm watching your name, so I'm sorry. MKG uh, 2001 uh, discovered with uh, abrupt multiplexer uh, termination. So I, um, I I think we found what the issue was, and I did a quick pass at it to address it. There's some feedback that Vida and Friedel gave me, uh, but I think we, we got that covered as well. Um, that's it. That's what I did last week. All right, um, then to the next one. The next one on the list. Oh, is um, David. Well, David isn't here, but he said, well, I was also involved with it. There was the um, JS IPFS 0 0.28 release, um, which is great. Um, also, in this release, the um, JS IPLD resolver got renamed to G just JS IPLD. And yeah, he fixed some DHT tests and he's not blocked and he will work on the lib P2P next endeavor. Okay, that's cool. Um, then, oh, it's me, <laughs> the next one. Um, so I've worked on an interesting issue, which is the Webpack out of memory issue. Some people might have seen it that the um, build boards were failing. Um, I think I finally found a solution. So I really like the solution that I found. It would also be cool if someone could review it or like getting more input because like it's really like it's, it should be backwards compatible, but I'm not sure. So also if anyone wants to try it out locally with his um, um, test suite, uh, just try it out if it, if it still works, it should just work. Um, and basically what happened is that in Webpack, so Karma creates a Webpack bundle for every test case, bundling the whole project. And with this change, it's only a single bundle for all the tests. All right. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm kind of blocked on the issue because I have changes in my queue for JS H, um, IPFS API. But as long as the tests are not working on CI, it's kind of difficult to merge. So I hopefully get this one merged soon and then um, I will not work anymore. Finally, I was again hopefully find some time to work on IPLD selectors and yeah, get my changes merged. Um, all right. So next up is MKG 20001. So I've been mainly focused on finishing the PLP node trust. I was rewriting it because uh, at the beginning it was using um, one wildcard certificate and that was kind of an issue because everyone had the same certificate. So I fixed that and made it use uh, some IP to DNS stuff that I also elaborated in the demo. And I'm blocked on the issue with the P2P web sockets where, where I added um, a line of code so it passes the options object to uh, the pull web uh, pull web sockets module to create the server with certificate uh, and key because uh, that wasn't passing the options properly and there were also the uh, stream maxing issues and uh, another issue basically it's about uh, being able to crash the node randomly um, and that is also a problem. And I had the idea of deploying libplp node trust to libpeer2peer.io domain because 
that's what it uh, says in the description. Um, that's what I will do next, and I will. I will also try to merge the uh, lib peer to peer WebSocket star um, rewrite, but uh, that is currently blocked by the lib peer peer rewrite. Um, was everything understandable or? Yep, yeah, was good. Yeah, we could hear you well. All right. Um, yeah, thanks for the update. Um, Next one is John. Hey. Uh, so I mostly worked last week and not so much this weekend, but last week on. Um, so Adam Stone made this big pin PR for JSIPFS um, that had some pinning features and um, basically, and then he pushed some new code. So basically, that on its own, it was was good. Um, I made some tweaks for like option passing for HTTP stuff and um, or option parsing, um, and I think if, you know a few other things. Um, I also made some interrupt uh, tests for uh, between Go and JS for the pin, um, and uh, I was just I was so I I think I would you know we'll be making a pull request on that today. But um, <clears throat> I also noticed Dimitri's uh, pull request to the interrupt suites. And um, there's very different, very different patterns than I was using. So I would love to talk to Dimitri about, um, you know, the configuration-based testing, and if you know, maybe we could use both of ours to make sure that we kind of flesh out that both, both um, that the that configuration, those configurations are are uh, sufficient, or we can do yeah, just uh, figure out maybe the next iter iteration on that. Um, maybe I'll just push what I have now so we can see both, and then and then I'm totally happy to go back and change everything. Because the concepts are very simple, but it's just a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of fixtures kind of going on. Um, and what else? I'm sorry, let me see my notes. Um, I have a few. Um, so I have a few PRs that are open. There's the, the only hash kind of uh, the speculative ad where it just just generates the the hash for some file. Um, that is open and. Um, there's two pairs related to that, one, one in IPFS API and one in IPFS. Um, the IPFS API right now, I think it's ready. It's, you know, we seem to have a lot of CR, CA uh, inconsistencies, um, but I think everything passed at one point, kind of, <laughs> over the course of, uh, with the same code, with the same code. Um, so I would like to, I think I'm ready for, totally ready for a review there uh, and any feedback you have. Is in the way that it's just like syntax or style or whatever. Um, so uh, the next thing is I just want to. So if I push these pin PR and then the interrupt test, I'll have like four or five PRs that are open. So I want to make sure like that my priority will be to post posting those. Small things, but um, all right. Uh, also, oh, sorry. Yeah. Going. Um, also, uh, also as I think a, couple, a few of us have a lot of have a few things that are on the burners waiting for review. Um, so I'll make that a a thing that I do over the next day or two to try to help you guys move forward in that because um, I think that we're all a bit stuck on that. But I, yes, but I can't finalize anything. Still new. All right, so thanks for your update. Um, next up is Victor, so. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen because it's gonna be a bit faster to go through everything, plus you get a, a nice view of what's happening. You should be able to see my screen now, right? Cool, so the first one is Jenkins. So Jenkins builds all the pull requests and everything that we deal with. Um, so if you have a pull request open, you are probably going to notice that now we have a Jenkins uh, thingy here. If you go to the details, you will see the different platforms after it automatically scrolls to the bottom. Uh, you will see all the different platforms that we're building on together with the version number. 
Uh, if you click on this one, you will see the specific logs. But if you're interested in seeing which tests are failing, going through each platform and like collecting the information can be a bit much. Um, so there is, a, there is a tab up here that says tests. And here you get an overview on what platform they were failing on and exactly uh, what they were. And you can also see the output. So this is a bit nicer way of figuring out what your errors are. It also shows which tests we are skipping, which eventually we're gonna have to implement uh, all of these again. Some of them are platform specific and some are not. Um, so Jenkins lives on ci.ipfs.team. By default, when you come here, it's gonna look like this, uh, which is completely different from what you see in the pull request. And to get to this new UI, you have to press on open blue ocean. And here you see the proper overview of all the projects that we are currently building. And then you can either search to JS IPFS, and you should find it, and you can see the branches, and the pull request, and the activity, and so on. Um, if you want to be able to retry a job, you need to be logged in, which happens via GitHub, and it uses your organization permissions to retry jobs, and, and so on. Uh, so if you don't see a retry bottom up here, make sure you're logged in and that you are included in the organization and stuff. Um, so that was about Jenkins. The second one was uh, is about JS IPFS. So in the all hands, I quickly mentioned this. Uh, so now we have this fancy little dashboard. This is a public endpoint. All this is open for viewing. So I'm gonna put it in here as well if you want to check it out. Right now it's very basic, it just has the number of peers, it shows the bandwidth we're currently using, the load average of the machine, and the memory usage. Eventually we want to have more details here, um, so there is a, a different issue, uh, deploying JS IPFS to the Galaxy, which contains, I put some logs about what we want to expose uh, specific metrics, but if you have more ideas, like the number of uh, LIPID-P protocols currently connected to and, and so on, it will be very good if you can write down your thoughts so we make sure we get all the metrics we want to be able to make it faster and more stable and so on. Um, ah, also, eventually this is gonna be deployed on js.ipfs.io, uh, but until the DNS is uh, solved, it's gonna be this IP, and then it works exactly the same as the Go IPFS uh, gateways. You can request content and so on. Um, and yeah, I think that's it about those two things. Then the last thing that I'm working on is uh, deploying uh, WebSocket store uh, because it's, it's currently hogging like all the resources we have on our cloud instance. Um, so this cloud instance is an instance we use to just deploy scripts and, and programs. But then WebSocket store is now included by default and we are starting to have a lot of nodes and our little tiny prototype server can no longer handle it. So now I'm, I'm chopping that out into its own its own deployment from this. Um, and that's it, I think. Anyone have any questions? All oh, right, I'm supposed to talk about what I do next as well. Um, I'm gonna finish the JS IPFS infrastructure is the DNS stuff. I'm gonna finish the WebSocket store deployment as well. And currently I am refactoring all the JS IPFS tests to be properly isolated. Some of them are gonna run in parallel uh, for now. And I'm also splitting out the CLI test and the uh, most of the HTTP API test into its own repositories, similar to how the interop uh, repo currently works. So it will be a language independent repository where we include the other products and then we run the test across all the implementations. That's it, for real. All Can right, you thank you. Maybe yeah. explain that again or, um, so one thing that I've, uh, uh, that I've noticed with the product structure, with like all these projects is that whenever you, make, whenever you make a change that requires, like I'm working on a pin, 
uh, as pen feature, I have to make at least like three pull requests, you know, potentially four um, across different projects, and they're all be synced up. Um, by separating the, the tests that we currently have in the HTTP and CLA uh, for or for JSIPFS, will that increase that? Is that the so? Um, I think we're talking about two different things. Uh, okay. one, one is the CLI test in JSIPFS to make sure that our CLI is like actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, You're passing the orgs correctly and everything. Basically that the usage of this library we use for CLIs, that we're interacting with it correctly. Uh, but then on the other hand, we have the CLI test that tests that the CLI interface is proper across the implementations. So in reality, there are, there are two different things, and the same with the HTTP API. Some things should be the same across all the implementation. These are the interface tests or the interrupt tests. But then we also need to make sure in JSIPFS that we can start up the HTTP API properly and that it receives requests and responding to requests. But it should not test that the pinning works the same across implementations. Basically, we shouldn't have to include Go IPFS in JS IPFS to be able to do the, the interrupt testing. That should happen elsewhere. But then the rest of the, the, the core concern of JS IPFS should still be in there. I don't want us to end up with, with too many modules and then you have to spread out everything every, everywhere. So the, yeah, that's it. So kind of like right now, JS IPFS API, um, <clears throat> runs its suite of tests against the Go, um, the Go dev. So kind of like those suite of tests, it would, I mean, is that essentially running um, those suite of tests against both Go and the JS IPFS? So what I want to end up with is that when you run the JS IPFS API test, we mm -hmm. can use uh, fakes or mocks and, and do just unit testing, just the core um, of the actually API client while to test if JS IPFS API works the same for JS IPFS or Go IPFS, that needs to be asynchronous from the testing. It needs to be disconnected and it needs to happen elsewhere. Does that make sense? Okay. I think Marseille has his hands right as well. Um, yes, uh, I have a question because there are now public dashboards for JS IPFS. Is it possible to expose such dashboards for Web RTC Star and WebSocket Star? Um, so actually, currently we do have this. Uh, I have, we have our internal metrics uh, for our gateways and Jenkins and other things, and that also includes this uh, cloud instance that I was talking about. Uh, where we were, where we are running uh, a WebSocket store currently. Right now, this dashboard is not public because it's deployed in a in a private network. But once I move uh, WebSocket uh, WebSocket store into its own uh, server, we can make this public or we can give you access. However, we, we we basically have more control over the permissions and authorization at that point. But right now, it's not public. Okay. Any All other right. questions? I don't think so. Okay. Then, uh, okay, the next one. So, Sane, what are you working on or have worked on? Okay. Uh, just filed my first sort of set of PRs uh, this past week. Um, just going through the waffle board and checking off all of the like help wanted, ready, sort of easy type things. Um, uh, waiting some feedback on like a thin format uh, multi adder, and I was curious like what the thin waste multi adder like means in context of IPFS. So I made a PR for uh, the lib P two P like railing, um, and to do a little extra validation there but um, just not enough familiarity with, like, I guess, the varying formats of IPFS uh, addresses. Um, and then sort of next, uh, just more sort of floating issues that are out there. If people have any suggestions, I'm open to tackling problems. 
All right, cool. Uh, I saw that Victor raised his hand. Yeah, um, it was specifically about that PR. Uh, you don't have to take it now. I left a comment there about using uh, multi-address format rather than doing our custom validation, but uh, I don't think it's the right moment to bring that up here now, maybe. Okay. Okay, cool, yeah, <laughs> thanks. All right, um, okay, so we are done with the round table. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to talk about? Like it could be like general things, also things like, I don't know, like, please do your code reviews more regularly or I don't know, I'm blocked because someone else is not doing his work or whatever, so um, stuff like this. I don't see any hand, oh, I see a hand, yeah, John. Hey, uh, I have, so I have a couple questions. I actually have a, I have a lot of questions, uh, but I don't, but I know that we're at our time limit. Um, and I have been, it's been a little bit difficult to like find a good time to ask these types of questions because they're probably like the ones I was asking Victor. They're probably like fairly easy or simple or, uh, you know, it might be like a good, for me it's easier to have a conversation about them. Um, uh, I think that maybe like uh, in the earlier, in the actual, the full IPFS meeting earlier today, um, they kind of tried to designate some time after the call for those types of questions. Um, I think that might be a good time. Maybe that's a good time uh, to do it um, because it's when we all get together. Um, but also don't want to waste people's time. Um, is there another way that uh, we can, that I could like try to reach out to someone to try to like have these types of questions and conversations like whenever Dimitri and I have to if we get together over the interrupt tests I guess it's is it just through issues and comments and stuff or um, yeah Victor so what I found to work uh, usually if I have like a quick question or I just need to talk in, in general IPFS dev on IRC is usually a good source to talk with us developers on the project. I think all of us, mostly everyone, uh, hangs out in there and can answer questions. But then sometimes it's better to just do a Zoom call if you notice that maybe you are not like fully up to sync or you want to make sure you understand each other, to just have a video call and talk it through. Um, and when it comes to specific, like, I am blocked, I cannot figure out how this, this is working, even me and David have been doing a, a bunch of pair programming sessions as well, that might help. But like for general questions, quick things, IPFS dev, otherwise schedule a call with like a specific person who can help you out. Yeah, great, I think IPFS dev is a great source. Um, and I also don't quite know who knows what. I don't know who's been here, who has worked on which things. So, um, so I think if you, if you ask an IPFS dev, we can probably help mm -hmm. like redirecting to each other. So if you have a question about BitSwap, I kind of know who you would ask. If you have uh, trouble with LibPTP, I most definitely know which person to ask. IPLD is Volker and so on. So if you ask an IPFS dev, if no one knows like the answer to your question, at least they know someone who supposedly knows the answer to the question and can help you to redirect to that person. Okay. All right. So, um, so I think, uh, so I, I personally, personally also enjoy the idea of having at least like five minutes at the end of this talk, of this call to uh, having those questions. I mean, like, because if we would have started on time, I mean, we're now like basically half an hour in. Um, so we would have had those five minutes. And I think, yeah, it's available because also like even for myself, I mean, I joined in January, so I still have, often I wonder like who is, who I should ask, I have no clue. So um, yeah, so I also ask an OIRC or, but also I think it would make sense to do it on the call. Um, yeah, um, depending on the time. So yeah. Uh, um, as we said, so we are running out of time. So if there aren't any important issues left, I will close the meeting and... So Marcel has something to raise before we quit. Um, so I mentioned that I wanted to deploy a 
Lipid-PNO trust to the Lipid-PIO domain. And I wanted to ask, is this even possible and who I have to ask and what do I have to do? And Victor? Yeah, you would ask me, I think. Um, I still think, I'm not exactly sure because David is not here right now, but David has been talking about doing a like from scratch review of the whole no trust thing. So I don't want to go ahead and just deploy it now on, on libpd.io. Uh, but if there is a, a issue where you have asked for this deployment somewhere, IPFS infrastructure would be the right GitHub repository, I think. And then we can continue talking in the GitHub issue to make sure we remove all the blockers and then we can deploy it. We give you access to the analytics and all that stuff. Um, yeah, okay, so I will go ahead and create an issue there, so... Yeah. Okay. All right, anything else? No, so I will close the meeting and thank everyone for joining, and yeah, we'll see us next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Happy Monday. Bye. <laughs> Bye.